Hello and welcome to Reinfuse. Today, well, if you've uh, if you watched a few of my videos, you may well have seen this device uh, a little while in the past, and this is the Konami Picno, and it is uh, well, it's a kid's drawing tablet. Obviously, it's it really is no different to what it looks like. So yeah, it's like a little pen in the front there, and all sorts of things. Stuff pops up on the screen, and you draw and what have you. Now, when I first reviewed it, or took a look at it anyway, I didn't really mention the cartridge slots at the top. So if I lean this forward somewhat, you see there's, there's two little cartridge slots up there. And the reason why I didn't mention it was because all I owned at that point was this, which is a save cart. It's this right there, it's a save cart. Now, I did look around to see if I could find games. Um, Mostly after a random conversation with uh, Quang when you're on a, a road trip somewhere. Um, and you just can't. <laughs> you just can't find them. They are, they're around there. They are, they do pop up on auctions, but rarely. And when they do, they, they seem to go for a fair amount of money. Certainly more than I'm willing to pay for what is effectively just a, a kid's drawing tablet. So yeah, it was a shame. But then I, I'm a bit more searching. I found the Team Europe blog, who I will include the link of down there. Now, Team Europe do a lot of things uh, that's quite cool. They tend to take apart very little known machines and try to dump the contents in the games for MAME to use, or to give help to the MAME developers. And they also make flashcards, obviously. And so they made this. And this is the Picno flashcard. Now, it's not your, uh, your your more advanced form of flashcards with SD support and stuff. Probably a bit overkill for this machine because there looks like there's only about 23 titles possibly for it. So it would be a little bit overkill anyway. But this is uh, it's basically just uh, an EEPROM. And each EEPROM can hold uh, one or two games because they're different sizes. Uh, 512 or 1 meg. And... Uh, it's a one meg title, hence why it's on on its own. And they, but they also send along all of these, <laughs> all of these EEPROMs. So uh, in total, there's thirteen titles out of the the potentially twenty three, possibly more. Twenty three is all I could find, but there may be more out there. Who knows? Um, yeah, so it means we get to take a little look at some of the extra titles that came with this machine. Now, there is one thing I do want to say about the uh, the actual the cartridge itself. Uh, you can skip ahead to the games if you don't want to listen to me waffle about this. But somebody brought up an interesting point when they, they left a comment underneath the original video. Uh, I'll include the original video, by the way, up here somewhere, if I remember. And uh, that's if you take a look at the, the actual carts. They're slightly reminiscent of the PC Engine cart. And they kind of are. They're the same pitch, as in the uh, the size and distance of the actual interfaces. Uh, the same number of pins as well. And um, obviously they're both very, very thin carts too. Now, that's an interesting one. Because um, if you know, if you've been watching some of the, the mini console news, obviously Konami are about to release the PC Engine Mini. And that's because they now own... Hudson, who owned the rights to most of the PC Engine uh, titles and uh, and licenses, partly with NEC, but obviously enough for Konami to release it. But when this machine was released in, say, 1992, Konami didn't own Hudson, but because they didn't own Hudson until, well, they didn't start the acquisition until 2001, but they did have a very tight relationship with them from 1985. So, yeah, it's possible that the some of the development of these carts uh, came from the, the, their work on the PC Engine. Possibly. Don't really know. But it's an interesting one all the same. And it's certainly uh, very coincidental. If not, maybe, maybe they were just inspired. The actual flash cart itself is very interesting. Because that is um, it's a very thin cart. But it's kind of the pins are beneath the uh, a, a plastic like uh, grill, uh, presumably to stop kids from messing up the uh, the contacts, maybe. 
Uh, and so to get around this, Team Europe have basically made this kind of this free board sandwich with a tiny, really thin PCB at the bottom with the contacts. Uh, and then with this thicker one here to make up the bulk of the the actual uh, cartridge uh, sandwiched on top. Very interesting, very cool. And uh, they've done a lot of, obviously put a lot of work in getting this going. Anyway, let's go and take a look at the games. Right, I apologize for the uh, not great picture. It, uh, for some reason, the RetroTink does not want to put color on this machine. <laughs> so I'm having to drop back to my old video converter, which is putting quite a lot of noise through. And maybe the pig now, of course, I've never done the maintenance on it. Maybe it needs some. Right, well, this is it. <laughs> this is uh, the first of the games. So this is 109. And, well, yeah, there it is. It's a puzzle game. <laughs> so I guess we'll start it up. We won't go through all the games, obviously, because uh, we don't need to do this. Uh, that's not going to be very interesting for anyone. Oh, that's an error. What that error is. Doesn't matter. <laughs> no idea what any of this stuff is. Yeah, you've got to push a button as well as move the uh, pointer, so it does make it interesting. That was not the button to start stuff. Uh. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm sure that was number of pieces. I'm guessing that was number of pieces. Right, yes, it was. So nice and simple. Oh man, do you have to... Yeah, you do. You have to hold the button down, right. Um. So, do these... Can you rotate these, or...? I guess not. That makes things a bit easier. <laughs> Don't know where that one goes yet. Oh, blimey. Okay. So let's try putting that there. That looks basically right. Oh, no. It not let you put it down if it's wrong. It can't go down there. So it must go up there. Oh, blimey. Trying to get it to fit in is difficult. Oh, that's not, no, that's not interesting. Right, so, yeah, okay, you have to push the button. Right, so that must, must go here. Where does that go? <laughs> I'm failing at a kid's puzzle. So, where the, what, where, did it not give me the full puzzle? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's go to the next game. Oh, there's the more traditional Konami logo. It's actually a game. Right, so now obviously changing the um, the actual game on this is a little bit more involved than on a normal console. Because it's the flash car, I, I literally had to change an EEPROM over, so I had to get my chip extractor to do that. Right, so this looks like... Well, there's a paintbrush, so there's definitely going to be painting going on. Ooh, that's nice. Just skip that. <laughs> Can't read it, so it's just a painting. Just for a second there, that kind of looked like it was going to be a uh, a full on. Game, but no, plainly not. So it's just a coloring book. Um, yeah, well, I say just a coloring book. It's got little touches. 
I could definitely see how kids would be uh, fascinating by this. Oh, no, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> so there's little touches. All right, well, let's flip it over to the second game, because this is a two-game EPROM, and we'll see what the second game is. Oh, hello. Uh, parts. Oh, are we building an avatar here? Oh yeah, we are. We're changing. We're changing her, this woman's face, and that's slightly creepy. <laughs> so this is kind of building an avatar. Uh, an avatar. So is that it? Because I can't see any way to go anywhere. So is that literally what this is? Just that's. <laughs> That's interesting in terms of game. Um, do any of these do anything? We can save and load. Do normal drawing functions. Right, well. <laughs> Um, well, that's that then. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a lot of other games, but there's, they're literally, this is, I think basically, probably they're all like painting or, or just things like that. So <laughs> it's an interesting title. The fact that it's got all these extra games is kind of cool. Um, and it's quite, it's actually quite a good kids drawing tablet as well. Um, so yeah, an interesting one, especially for a company like Konami. It's just an interesting pickup. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like. If you really enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't enjoy the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. See you next time.